All right, it's time for another Suburban video. As you can see, I got the motor pulled out. Got a pretty blue torque converter back there. Had the transmission rebuilt about three years ago. So, uh, that came out uh, surprisingly easy. Motor mounts are bad, which I figured. Uh, I was going to replace them anyway. Uh, being so old, these front brake lines are a little bit hard to get to when you have stuff in the way. So I'm going to replace these rubber ones uh, while everything's out. Be a lot easier to get to. A little bit of oil, more on this side, which that's the expected. I'm going to degrease that and clean it up. This side's pretty good here. Not a problem. I've, uh, I can get to the last. I had two bolts on the exhaust manifold on the bottom that didn't want to come loose. So I got a little bit more room now. I may have to get me some metric wobbly sockets. Uh, to get it off, I'll apply some heat. I want it out of the way whenever I drop the engine back in. So, uh, it was easy enough to get out. I just pulled it back with a rope. Got everything out of the way. Um, got the motor ready to go. Uh, well, I should say the block and the crank. I'm going to get that out to the machinist next week so I can get it back and start rebuilding it. I don't know how much that'll be. Hopefully they're not too expensive now, but the uh, price of everything else has gone up. I imagine it's it's going to be high. He's going to make me a package deal. He's going to get me some Hastings rings, and I think it's King bearings. I'm not going with the aluminum alloy bearings that GM put in them. Uh, I'm just not a big fan of aluminum for bearings. I'm old school. I'm going to get something that's going to hold up a little bit better. Uh, let's see... What else have I got to replace it in here? Not too much. Everything was everything was real good. The train the uh, motor came off because the transmission was pulled off about three years ago, so those uh, alignment pins weren't uh, rusty or stuck in there. I've got a ratchet strap underneath the uh, transmission to hold it in place while I pulled it out. Then I can go ahead and adjust it whenever we drop it back in. But uh, <clears throat> that won't be for a couple of months. I got to do degreasing. I got to build the motor. I got to paint it, paint it real good. Get it where I get a decent paint job on it. Uh, the firewall is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Of course, I'll clean this side once I get all everything out of the way. A little bit of degrease up on the side of there. So it uh, it's looking pretty good. Of course, all my old head bolts. I got a. I might. I've already got one set I saved. I'm gonna probably throw these away. It won't be a lifetime before I use those bolts on something else. So I don't need them hanging around. I got enough old nuts and bolts that I can go ahead and uh, get rid of those. So uh, all right, on to the next thing. All right, I got my new radiator. I just stick it in the back here. Keep it out of the way. I don't want to get it damaged before I get it put back in. I haven't got a new water pump yet, but I will be getting that soon. And uh, getting all my gaskets up. I only have a few oddball gaskets I've got to get. I've already got the one for the oil filter, uh, adapter, uh, oil cooler. I've already picked that one up. But uh, it's the headliner out of our Cheyenne. We're going to recover that. Just letting it dry out. It got a little damp. We got to pull that foam off of it. We got the door panel out in the Cheyenne. We've got to uh, cover up them bullet holes. So we went ahead and pulled that out and put a new door handle in it. It got broke. So, uh, all right. All the pistons look really good. They uh, no wear on the outside of them. All the rings. They, none of them were stuck. Let's see, where's number five at? There, number five. That's that one that was, uh, intake manifold was getting so much oil on it. You can see all that gunk I got to clean off, but rings didn't uh, stick on that one. These going to be pretty easy to clean off. I got ultrasonic cleaner that I'm going to clean these things off with. Get them nice and pristine. Treat it like an operating room. Some of the bearings, a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of scratching. I was expecting that. I was getting a little tiny bit of rod knock 
when I first started up in cold weather, but it's not really bad. Not bad at all. All my uh, wrist pins are good. Rods are good. I got real lucky. On these uh, rod caps, I went ahead and marked uh, which number they were. And then I put a white number, I mean a, a white line on that side so when I reassemble it, I'm not going to get that paint off of there. When I reassemble it, then I got these rod caps in the, in the uh, right orientation. I don't want to take any chances on that. I don't know if it matters or not, but I'm going to assume that it does because it's just as easy to do it right. There's another bearing right there. Not bad. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, uh, no catastrophic damage anywhere. And they'll clean up good. That ultrasonic cleaner is going to clean these things up real nice. So, uh, that's good. All right. All right, the rear main. Everybody always talks about Chevy's leaky rear mains. This thing's dry as a bone. It did not leak. The only place it leaked was at the oil pan right at the very bottom. They have a different size... Well, it's a stud that comes out of the block, and the corners leak, so I imagine there wasn't enough sealant there to keep it from dripping. But that, that rear main held up really well, 250,000 miles, and uh, I've got a new one, Felpro, of course, but that did really good. I was surprised. I was really surprised about that. All right, on these uh, <coughs> caps, that, now I'm going to have to clean that one off real good. On these caps, I thought I was going to have to uh, take a punch, but GM's already numbered them, so that was real nice. So I know exactly where they go back. I just took a picture of it so I could remember. Oh, that's gooey. I'm going to have to get that cleaned off before I put it in there with the other ones. Yuck. Let me clean my hand off. All right, on the very back one that holds the oil pump, uh... This, this is cold. I've got so much sludge built up in here. That pan had so much sludge, and I ran synthetic oil, so this thing must have been full of sludge before I got it. Because I did regular oil changes on it, and it was always dark, so that it uh, must have been cleaning it out over time, but didn't have enough time to do it. That one, yeah, that one I can't even get out. I've got to ultrasonic clean these. But you see the bearing on that, a little bit of scraping. The crank looks good. I'm not going to drag that out. You're probably going to have to grind that down just uh, uh, for the next size bearing. But it looks good. But it's got little surface scratches, but nothing deep. So that that's good. I was happy to see that. But uh, like I said, I'm glad the way GM marked the top of those caps. That makes it a hell of a lot easier. And then these ones here, they were gunked up pretty t good too. And there's a plate. At I tell you the truth, I can't re recall right now what it's called, but it uh, it bolts to these on top. Oh, and I'm sorry, I can't remember what they call them. But uh, everything looks everything looked good. Nothing uh, nothing crazy at all which is good. I'm glad this motor held up real well. That sludge, I don't know what happened to that. It's probably why my lifters were ticking and I got a little rod knock, like I said, whenever I cranked it up when it's cold, so, but that's normal. All right, I finally found a melon cam and all the proper roller lifters. That was $480 for these critters. But uh, I took a dial, a digital caliper, and I measured everything on them because I'd had them before I uh, passed the date that I could return them. So I measured the height, the diameter, everything, all the grooves. And I was, uh, I was kind of amazed how little wear there was on the old ones. As bad as they sounded, they, uh, they measured out pretty good. A little bit of wear. Ten thousandths, maybe. Depending on which one it was. I measured the cam, too. 
make sure the lobes were right, no advance or retard. Everything lined up real good. But these are pretty lifters. They look like they're well built. Melling's pretty good stuff, so I'm happy with these. I just put some light oil on them, and I got them in a bag right now where they won't get any uh, flash rust on them. But uh, I was glad to buy one. Rock Auto had one, believe it or not. And I wouldn't want to go with a no brand or no name brand. So, uh, all right. Uh, here's my Melly cam. It's exactly the same as the stock one. But the only thing they did is kind of odd. They welded a collar right here where you normally have a lobe for mechanical fuel pumps. So I don't know uh, why they did it. I don't. It's not going to interfere with anything. I don't particularly care about that. But I just thought it was odd that it was on there. That was the only difference between the two. So uh, that turned out real nice. All right. All right, if you go take an engine apart, get you a bunch of bags. These were like 80 of them for about $12 at Walmart. So I uh, I go ahead and mark what, what they are so I don't lose track. That's my oil pump shaft. I'll put these all the op ultrasonic cleaner. I got a few oddball stuff there. I think that's the uh, harmonic balancer bolt and uh, oil pressure sending in and out. All my pan bolts. I keep I keep all this stuff together. Those are bolts for the rear main seal. But uh, well, that's the update on this one. Till I see you next time, y'all have a good one.